o que um dos maiores cientistas do mundo na investigação do paranormal tem para te dizer. Cola aí. Fala galera, a gente está aqui na Universidade de Londres, Goldsmiths, para conversar com um dos maiores cientistas do mundo na pesquisa do paranormal, que é o professor Dr. Christopher French, que além de tudo é amigo nosso também, parceiro de pesquisa, eu atualmente estou replicando um estudo dele. Eu acabei de gravar com ele lá em cima, eu poderia até falar que estou indo lá agora conversar com ele para ficar com cara de introdução, mas não vou enganar vocês. Vamos lá então. Em mais um dos famosos dias cinzentos aqui da capital inglesa, eu voltei na Universidade de Londres agora para conversar com o Dr. Chris French. Enquanto você curte a paisagem, eu vou explicando que ele é um dos grandes responsáveis por propagar a psicologia anomalística no mundo, que é uma área de pesquisa próxima à psicologia da religião, que estuda comportamentos e experiências religiosas, e da vertente mais séria da parapsicologia. Embora a psicologia anomalística tenha uma tradição mais crítica em relação a isso. O professor Chris French ele é membro de diversas associações científicas, como a Sociedade Psicológica Britânica e a Sociedade Britânica de Pesquisa de Falsas Memórias. Ele fundou aqui há 18 anos a Unidade de Pesquisa de Psicologia Anomalística, que é um laboratório de referência nessa área. Eu vou deixar aqui na descrição do vídeo algumas pesquisas dele. Agora que a gente chegou no escritório dele, bora prosear. E aí, pessoal, a gente está aqui com ninguém menos que o Dr. Christopher French, da Universidade de Londres, do É uma das autoridades máximas em pesquisa do paranormal e assuntos desse tipo. Vou fazer umas perguntas para ele aqui, porque a memória não está boa. Thank you again, professor. Um, I think there are three main areas that we that seem to be kind of concentrating on at the moment. Um, one is uh, we have a big project on sleep paralysis. Um, we recently carried out a survey in collaboration with the BBC Focus magazine. And this is a collaboration between myself, one of my colleagues here at Goldsmiths, Professor Alice Gregory, um, uh, Dr. Brian Sharpless over in the States, who's one of the world's experts on sleep paralysis, um, and uh, Dan. Dennis, Dr. Dan Dennis, who used to be a Goldsmith student, but he's now at Harvard. Uh, so we're collaborating on this, as I say, very large scale uh, survey. We've got the data in now, we're, we're beginning the analysis. Uh, we had almost 7,000 completed surveys. Wow. Probably the biggest research on the paralysis ever. We think it may be. I mean, we're, we're also asked about a phenomenon called exploding head syndrome. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. It's a real thing. Uh, it's when people are just drifting off to sleep and they hear a, a loud noise, or I think they do, it's a hallucinatory experience uh, that wakes them up with a start. Sometimes it's an explosion, but it might be a scream, a gunshot, Uh, someone slamming the door, but it wakes them up. Um, unlike sleep paralysis, which typically goes on for at least a few seconds, mm -hmm. this is very short, sharp, shock kind of phenomenon. Um, and we know for a fact that it's definitely the largest um, survey of exploding head syndrome, oh. um, and it's probably the largest detailed survey of sleep paralysis. Oh. We have got questions on paranormal belief and basically how people interpret their experiences. Now, I mean, the thing is, of course, that uh, we, we are not pretending this is going to be a representative sample, um, and therefore there is going to be the, the slight problem, if it is a problem, that people who have already decided that what they're experiencing is sleep paralysis are less likely to be saying it's ghosts, it's aliens. Mm -hmm. Those people wouldn't probably be coming to do our survey. Um, but it will be interesting to see what results we get anyway. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, that was only one of the areas. Yes, uh, the, other, the other two main areas that we're, uh, we're still kind of uh, very interested in. One is the psychology of belief in conspiracies, mm -hmm. um, some of which overlaps with the paranormal belief and experience stuff, some of which doesn't, obviously. Um, and the third main area is the psychology of false memories, mm -hmm. um, which again is just obviously overlaps, in, with, I would argue, in some respects, particularly with respect to alien abduction claims and uh, past life memories. Mm -hmm. So they're the three main areas that we're concentrating on at the moment.
Well, uh, to be quite honest, I've got to that stage where I'm actually thinking in terms of when will I actually retire? Yeah. So, um, I heard something I mean, <laughs> about that. <laughs> well, my, to be honest, my ideal would be if I can afford it, then um, I would like to kind of basically uh, stay on as an emeritus professor mm -hmm. yeah. so that I can kind of carry on with the parts of the job that I love. So that would include the research, that would include the, uh, the public engagement stuff and the writing. Um, and just drop all of the other stuff that seems to eat up so much of the day. Um, so in terms of uh, carrying on with kind of collaborative research, well yes, I hope that does continue. Um, at the moment though, it says it very much in this kind of transition phase. It is an interesting question. Um, I mean, I think if you look at cross cultures, you'd tend to find high levels of belief in various paranormal phenomena but the actual kind of profile might differ so in some cultures there might be a kind of more of an interest in ghosts that you would not find maybe in a different country um, I mean if you take the UK for example the sheer fact that we like to think that we've got such a rich history we've got all these very very old buildings and so on and so forth I think that kind of feeds into that interest that people have in mm -hmm. haunted houses and castles and so on um, but again, there are, as you will know, I should be aware, there are huge differences. Um, there will be, I mean, one of the other things that fascinates me is the way that um, these kinds of trends can vary in time. So, um, you know, we've, in recent decades, we've seen a comeback of, in terms of, say, some like belief in angels, mm -hmm. which <clears throat> you would have thought was kind of something that was kind of quite a minority interest, but suddenly, for whatever reason, that, that kind of comes to the fore, and there's some lot of people who are interested in it and so on. Um, so, again, with respect to the kind of particular levels of, of belief in the UK, um, well, I'm not entirely convinced that they are necessarily that much higher than they would be in other countries. Um, but in terms of the kinds of things that people believe in, if these things come and go, there are kind of fashions to them. I mean, mm. alien abductions, I think, the, the peak there was maybe the kind of 1890s. That's something that is still around, but not at the same level mm. that it was. But it's largely down to the kind of whatever the current belief system, the prevalent belief system, is within a particular culture. And that will be related to all kinds of factors like um, what's, the, what's the kind of predominant religion. So um, in countries where Catholicism is the predominant religion, there's likely to be much higher belief in things like possession and exorcism, to give but one example, um, and maybe uh, lower levels of belief in, in other paranormal phenomena, um, which, I mean, things like telepathy, psychokinesis, etc., etc. Uh, I think they probably would be more likely to be found in less traditional religious believers. Mm -hmm. There's no one simple answer. I mean, just in terms of that relationship between religious belief and paranormal beliefs, um, on the one hand, you might expect that uh, if you already believe in life after death, mm -hmm. it's much more, it's much easier to believe in other paranormal phenomena, particularly those that relate to life after death, like reincarnation, ghosts, mediumship, etc. Um, on the other hand, some people argue for the, what's sometimes referred to as the, the spiritual void hypothesis, the idea that um, we all have spiritual needs and if we can't satisfy them through religion, then we'll turn to paranormal beliefs, in which case you'd expect a negative correlation mm -hmm. between paranormal beliefs and uh, religious beliefs. And in fact, the situation is just very, very complicated. <laughs>